Hello everyone, it's Mrs. Canales, the Assistant Orchestra Director at Robert Bella High School. And today I'm gonna to be helping you with reading in tenor and treble clef. All right, your prerequisites. You must have a good understanding of fingerboard geography on your cello. You must feel comfortable with shifting and you must have knowledge of harmonics. Now, if for some reason you do run into a little bit of trouble, you can always pause, play back and review at any time during the video. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at tenor clef. Tenor clef is also known as C clef, and this is located on the fourth line of the music staff. Now, uh, it looks very similar to alto clef, but alto clef is placed differently on the music staff. So remember, ours is on the fourth line of the music staff. Now, treble clef is also known as G clef, and this is positioned uh, around the second line of the music staff, and that is where G is located. All right, so you may be asking, why do we need to read music in different clefs, and why can't we just stay in bass clef? Well, the reason is that the tenor and treble clefs are used to avoid reading too many ledger lines. It makes things easier on our eyes. Now, if you were still in bass clef, would you want to read this note? I don't think so. Look at all those ledger lines. That's just way too many. So let's learn how to read in tenor and treble. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And there will be different examples at different playing levels. So go ahead and follow me to the studio. All right, tenor clef. As I mentioned before, it is known as C clef. And it is on the fourth line of the music staff. And this is where C is located. Now this C right here would be your second finger on the A string in first position. And then of course you would travel all the way up on the A string to get the rest of these notes. Let's take a look at an example. This here is the A natural minor scale. The very first note is A your open A string. Now, if you take a look at it in bass clef, you are very familiar with where A is located. It is on the fifth line of the music staff. And if we were to look at it in tenor clef, it is on the third line of the music staff. I'm gonna go ahead and play this example for you and I would like for you to follow along first reading in bass clef. <laughs> Now the last note, of course, is your A harmonic in on the A string, but now I want you to uh, play, but this time I want you to play along in tenor clef. Remember, it's, it's the exact same notes, except that now we're reading it in a different place on the music staff due to the change of clef. <laughs> Now you can play back any of these examples uh, so that way you can get used to reading in tenor clef. This is the, the beginning level of reading in tenor clef for the cello. Now these next two examples are a little more challenging so I'll explain them briefly so that way you can at least hear it and play along as many times as you need to um, with better understanding of how to use these clefs when transitioning. Now this example here is in E major and it is an E major two octave scale, and it goes all the way up here to this last uh, E, which is a harmonic E on your cello. Now you can find that, of course, right here I have three, but if you lightly touch onto the string, you'll hear that E as you're traveling up. Now it starts on E on the D string, and then it will transition into the um, A string for the C sharp, and then you'll transition into tenor clef for this F sharp right here. Let me go ahead and play this example for you. All 
All right, so it goes pretty high up on the cello. Now let's take a look at the next example. This is in D major and these are D major arpeggios. Now, just so you can understand how these fingerings work, these are little O's and that means that they are harmonics. And this here is a zero, which means open string. This right here is an extended fourth finger, so that way you know to play F sharp here at the beginning and here at the end. All right, let's go ahead and listen to this example. Right. And you can always come back and review this and play it as many times as you need to to get used to transitioning into tenor clef. All right, treble clef now. Treble clef is known as the G clef. And as you can see here, it is centered on the second line of the music staff. This right here is G. It is the same G as in bass clef, fourth finger on the in fourth position on the A string. So this here is G. And as you can see, if we place that note here, it would give us much more room to write more notes instead of adding extra ledger lines. All right, here is the A natural minor scale once again. And this time, of course, it is written in treble clef. So this right here is your open A, and then you would travel up onto the A string to the last harmonic A right here. Let me go ahead and play the example for you and follow along in treble clef. <laughs> Now remember, you can come back and review this as many times as you need to, to feel comfortable reading in treble clef. Now these are more challenging examples here. The first example and the second example here, they are both in A major. Here is an A major two octave scale starting and it's gonna be traveling up on the A string to get to this last A here, which is also a harmonic on your instrument. So if you're having trouble finding it, you can listen for the harmonic and, and place that note where it's relatively in tune. Look at how many ledger lines there are. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven ledger lines. Whereas when we transition into treble clef, we eliminate most of them and we end up with just one. Let me go ahead and play this example for you. Now the second example is an A major arpeggio. Here, once again, these are little O's which are symbolic of harmonics. So make sure that you follow along and you can you can play this without the recording and you can take your time to make sure that you get all the notes in tune. The metronome is set at 50 beats per minute if you would like to play along. All right, so as I mentioned before, remember you can pause, play back as many times as you need to so you can get used to reading in tenor and treble clef. Remember to practice, practice, and practice some more. Practice makes not perfect, but permanent, and you can do it. We'll be seeing you next lesson.